I'm so tired of the lamestream media. It's about time we get down to the real news. Get involved, get loud, and think on the brink. Well, when you consider that seven Floridians each day overdose on prescription drugs, it brings awareness to something that it really is a problem statewide. In fact, it's a it's a problem all throughout our country, of course. Well, here in Florida, of course, it's again one of the top issues that Attorney General Pam Bondi's office is addressing up front. And you heard the term uh, more than likely because it's been in the news for a while, pill mills. In fact, there was some pretty uh, 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 aggressive legislation this last session, which changed the course of events. I want to talk about that a little bit bit uh, in this segment with you, and also talk about some of the babies that are being born, again, to prescription drugs, and, and some of the problems. You know, we've become a society all too familiar with just popping a pill, and that's the problem again. Right. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see so you. So tell me, I know the pill mills are, are a problem. Um, they, they, they are. They are, and you know, throughout our country, and we had become known in Florida as the Oxy Express. Great. Because we didn't have legislation, so people were driving, flying down to Florida to buy their prescription drugs and taking them to Kentucky, Ohio, and different states to traffic them. Not exactly the image we want. No, not at all. And we were determined this past session, and the Senate and the House and the governor and I, we all worked great together, and we passed some of the toughest legislation in the country now to put the pill mills right, out. Let's give people a sense, uh, the, the, the brief 30,000-foot notes on that legislation, because a lot of people are not aware, and this yes. was really very, very aggressive. Let's talk yes. about it. Yes. Well, first of all, in Florida, what you could do a pill mill is where you walk in you're never even going to see a doctor if anything he's sitting in the back just signing prescription pads it's a cash only business that's it they have armed guards at the door because they deal in so much cash you walk in you say i need a prescription for oxycontin and you get it wow. and so that's what was happening so we passed tough criminal very enhanced criminal penalties to go after these and they, these aren't real but they're, they're doctors but they're drug dealers wearing white coats we say wow. and so we passed legislation tough enhanced criminal penalties but we also worked with the board of medicine and the florida medical association to pass tough administrative penalties to put these bad doctors wow. out of business because how do you hurt them you take their license that's right that's and right we know we have great pain management doctors out there but these are just the drug dealers. and you hear about it as well oh, i mean sure. the pain management thing is sort of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tricky thing. How many of these people, I wonder, Attorney General, are, um, uh, no, I mean, you're taking these drugs, prescription mm -hmm. drugs. Okay, so they were given to you from a doctor, so right. it's, uh, you right. know, feels legit, man. I mean, why would a doctor give me something I don't need, right, for heaven's sakes? Right. So what percentage of those people even know about it, and what percentage don't have a clue? Well, well, you know, so many of them are addicts, of course, and, and that's, you know what they tell us this number? Other than marijuana, prescription drugs are the drugs of choice among our teens now. What? Prescription drugs? Prescription drugs. Wow. That's the drug of choice. I even hate to take teens. an Excedrin. Well, and that's good, though. <laughs> and that's good. And that's, you know, and that's often how people get addicted, though. You know, they have back surgery. They have dental yeah. surgery. And so you start, you know, with a small amount, and then you get addicted. But, but the babies are the unintended Yeah, let's talk victims. about that now, because you, you were telling me earlier you, you had visited a hospital and you had seen, how many, what's the stats on I this? I did. Well, in Tampa, where I'm from, um, St. Joseph's Hospital, 20% of the babies going through the neonatal intensive care unit right. are born addicted to prescription drugs. All Children's Hospital, St. Petersburg, 30% of those babies are born I would have never guessed. I would have never drugs. guessed. Me either. Three out of ten babies are born. I, I just would not have guessed. And those are just the ones that they're catching who yeah. are going through the neonatal I intensive see. care units. And you know what people don't understand? These babies are going through the same withdrawal symptoms as an addict. Mm -hmm. Their little incubators have to be covered in blankets. They're sensitive to light, to sound, to touch. They, they quiver constantly. Once you see one of these babies, right. you know you have to do everything to make it stop. And their life has forever changed. Well, and we pray it's not. And, but, but yes, they need long-term treatment. treatment yeah. um, instead of milk, these babies are getting methadone or morphine. Wow, wow. How sad. And, oh, they're suffering tremendously. Yeah. So that was one of the root causes of, I'm sure, this legislation. 
Well, that came after, after the legislation. Okay. Okay. What happened, nurses and doctors reached out to me and wow. said, did you know this is a tremendous problem? So for this upcoming session, we've proposed a legislative task force because we have to come up with answers. We have to learn the numbers the true numbers throughout our state. We have to find out the long-term effects. We have to work with OBGYNs. We have to work with pediatricians. We have to educate these women about what the, the effects are doing to their unborn child. Yeah, and it is about educating folks. And that's one of the things I admire of you and your office the most, I think, at this point, is that you do seem to be in an educational mode all the time of trying to teach people around the state um, the, the do's and the don'ts of these very difficult topics that people sometimes don't have a clue. Well, and, and, and I started reaching out to adoption lawyers and to doctors and asking them, and they said a lot of these women think, well, they'll, they'll, they'll readily, read, readily admit, I've smoked marijuana, I've done illegal drugs, but they don't think because the word prescription is involved, the harm it can do to their child. And that's the whole, uh, that's the whole difficulty with this thing, obviously. Right. You know, I remember, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, people around me, the, uh, when a pregnant lady you know, wouldn't even have like, a, you know, a, a glass of wine or a drink exactly. of whatever, let yes. alone uh, whatever, you know, the medications and pills that are going to mess them up, of course. And now they're popping pills. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So again, again, Getting back to the root cause of the, the physicians and those that are um, administering these drugs is really the problem. Yes. From the yes. prescription standpoint. Absolutely. I mean, you're never, I mean, never going to stop somebody from getting it around the, the back corner. If that's going to happen, that's no, going to happen. No. And now that, now that we're hopefully shutting down the pill mills, right. what's happening? People are going to doctor See. shopping. Pharmacy yeah. robberies are on the rise. Wow. wow. So, so it brings up a whole other set of problems. Absolutely. Wow. Well, that'll certainly keep your office uh, hopping, I'm sure. Because well, law enforcement's done yeah. a great job. Yeah. Too. They've, they've been amazing at shutting these places down. It's sad when you think about it. There always seems to be a will and a way for people, isn't there? When, at the end of the day, you know, as, as sad as it is. But again, uh, very interesting legislation with the pill mills. And again, as the new legislation uh, uh, starts up in January uh, this right. year, um, you'll be at it again, I guess, That's with right. this. Right. And we'll see what happens with that. Again, Attorney General Pam Bonney joining us here. Smell come out loud here. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, get involved, get loud and think on the brink.